while I was working at Google, I wrote a long ass design doc. I think this was like a year into working at Google. I wrote a super long design doc and my tech lead was like the reviewer who's assigned to review it. He's really, really nice. I made a video about him. He's like one of the smartest engineer I ever worked with. In this case, he went out of his way to roast me, but I was super grateful for it because I learned a lot from it. That's why I liked him so much. That's why I liked him as a tech lead and as an engineer. At Google, people are really, really nice. They don't want to step on your toes. They don't want to offend you. So they won't be honest with you. They won't give you like honest feedback. But this guy was different. Like he genuinely cared. And I wrote a long design doc, added him as a reviewer, sent it to him. And like 30 minutes later, he sent me like a message like I got a ping and he said hey would you like some qualitative feedback for your design doc like that's how he said it I knew what was gonna happen and he said want some qualitative feedback we can get into like a meeting room or whatever and just like talk it over I was in the office that day and I was like yeah sure I already knew what was coming right he's gonna go in. he's gonna go hard on the design doc in fairness I kind of knew the content was technically accurate but it was so messy it was not super organized it was a long ass design doc though like at google you have to write some long design docs it was like 15 pages at least almost 20 pages long i'm including like diagrams and stuff like that if he's the one who has to review it he probably doesn't want to read that long ass garbage the way he went about giving me feedback though was insane we walked into the meeting room he wasn't like the type of guy that would really like talk a lot like not a ton of small talk but as soon as we got in the meeting room we didn't even talk about the design doc or whatever he just like made a couple jokes or something like he just made small talk and i was like why is he doing this in hindsight it's pretty obvious, right? Like when you're about to go hard on somebody and you know that, and maybe the other person knows it too, you kind of want to like butter them up. You kind of want to like start nicely before you go hard on them and roast them. So that's what he did. And that's pretty smart. He didn't tell me that's what he did, but it was obvious to me afterwards. I kind of learned from that. Like now if I'm about to go hard on somebody and really like criticize their work, I'll probably be nice to them for a minute before that. So they know that it's not personal. Like he's not trying to be mean. In terms of the feedback, feedback that he actually gave, he basically said, okay, this is kind of garbage. And he said it in the nicest way possible. He did go hard on the design doc. There was like a long list of things that he went over. In fairness, he showed me design docs that he wrote and I would read his design docs. I wasn't the reviewer, but anytime he wrote a design doc and had somebody else like a senior engineer review it, I would look at it too, because I wanted to improve. Nobody tells you this. Nobody tells you like, hey, you should do this or that to get better. You just kind of have to do it yourself. Like nobody's going to tell you when you join Google, like, hey, you should get good at writing writing design docs because written communication is really, really helpful. If you want to get promoted, if you want people to understand your ideas, you better get good at this stuff. And this guy had insane design docs. They were so good. Like they were so elegant and easy to read, even though they were about like complicated stuff. If you've ever read bad documentation before or read good documentation, like, you know, it just feels so good reading documentation that's like comprehensive and concise, like it's detailed, but it doesn't feel like you're reading like a wall of text. That's what this guy's design docs were. He showed me docs he wrote when he first joined Google and he worked hard to get good at writing, but he was already really, really smart when he first joined Google. So like this guy was just smart in general. He was really, really good at written communication. This process made me realize how important written communication can be. Unfortunately, like I don't have, like I can't show you like design docs I wrote at Google or whatever. The closest thing I probably have is this. If you go on my site, I'll paste the link, the design a YouTube clone. I wrote a design doc for a YouTube clone that I made, which is part Part of full stack development course, not trying to like plug it or anything, just giving the background. And these articles are kind of mini design docs. So this is how to design a YouTube clone, right? It's very, very short. If it was written like in Google Docs, it'd be four pages. This is written kind of how I would write design docs at Google. I will say that this is like less detailed. I don't write design docs for fun. I don't want to include like a ton of detail. Like it's just kind of boring. I know nobody's going to review this, but it's written how I would write design docs. Like when you start a design doc, you don't know who's going to be reading it. When you're writing code, or you're like making really detailed stuff. You're like in the weeds, like you know every detail. And then when you start writing about it, when you start sharing that information with other people, you assume they already know what you're talking about. It's like that with a lot of forms of communication. If you probably watched a technical video where the guy in the video already kind of assumes you already know the first 10 things before they get into the video. And that's like the most frustrating thing in the world, isn't it? They assume you already know everything. They don't even tell you like, okay, by the way, if you don't know about this, maybe do some background reading on X, Y, and Z. And that's something you want to do when you write a design doc. You don't know who's reading it. You don't know that they have all the context that you do. So at the very, very least, you don't have to go into everything. You don't have to explain to them, okay, I'm working on this microservice. Let me write 10 pages about it. 
but you can give them a few resources. By the way, this is the microservice. This is the background of what I'm trying to do. Uh, this is what the design doc is going to be about. This is what I'm going to cover in the next 10 or 20 pages. This is what it's about. If you don't care about that, then don't read the design doc. This is probably not a perfect example of that, but yeah, in the intro in this, I tell you like this document is about designing a simplified YouTube clone, which I implemented here. So if you want to know more about it, go here. But otherwise, this is it. I quickly explain like this is not like a one-to-one -one clone, but it's just a rough skeleton and we're just keeping the design simple. And then I quickly go into some background of what YouTube is. I don't get into the code. I don't tell you every little thing. I give you like a bit of background. I say like, okay, this is what YouTube is. I, I don't keep it super long. I don't give you like 10 pages. I know you don't want to know every little thing about YouTube. TLDR is YouTube is very big. It's a video platform. It has a lot of users. And this is the requirements that we are focusing on. This is the architecture diagram. You might not know what the heck is cloud storage? What the heck is PubSub? What are all of these? You might have never heard of them. That's why down here, I quickly give you like the TLDR. For video storage, we're going to be using cloud storage. This is like roughly what it is. If I wanted to make this a little bit better, I could have included like a URL to every single one of these, like to cloud storage, cloud PubSub, whatever. This kind of gives you the first thing. Nobody likes to spend an hour reading somebody else's design doc. Nobody cares that much about your work. So you want to make it as easy as possible for them to read it. It's the same way, like when you're talking, when you're giving a presentation at work, if you're nervous, you think everybody's focusing on you, everybody's paying attention to every stutter, every single thing you say. But in reality, I'll tell you this, nobody really cares. I've given presentations at Google where there was like 20 people in the room. There were like very senior people in the room, directors. You realize half the people don't care that much. They're probably checking their email. So you want to just keep that in mind. Like you don't want to go super in depth into something that nobody cares about. In this design doc, before I went in to all the details, all the weeds and everything. I just gave you a very quick overview. Now you already know, like within the first page, you already know what we are building and roughly how we're building it. I give you the picture and I gave you all the services that we're going to use. After that, we went into the details, right? And I probably could have gone a bit more in depth. I, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I think if you're somebody who has a CS degree and maybe you have done like a couple of personal projects before, I think by going on this design doc, you can clone the project relatively easily. You don't even have to buy the course. And now if you're a beginner, it's probably worth buying the course or if you get stuck or whatever, it's worth buying the course because then you have like how to do every exact thing. That was the goal of this design doc. There's enough detail here in the detailed section. You could do this without buying the course. You know how a user sign up works. I tell you exactly how I do it. And then I tell you, okay, when we authenticate somebody, we use something called a Firebase auth trigger. I have a link. And then you use this documentation to implement that feature. So it's not like a huge wall of text. You have like a few paragraphs, then you know how to do authentication. I do that for the rest of these as well. Like how do you upload a video? This is the TLDR of how to do that. I'm not going to show you the exact code, but if you follow some of these links or like these keywords, you'll roughly know how to do it. That's the whole purpose behind like written communication and a design doc. When somebody's reviewing your work, they don't need to know all the exact details. You don't need to tell them every little thing. You can just say like, okay, I'm going to use this already existing service and this is why I'm going to use it. So they can tell, like they can quickly do search on that service and see like, okay, is it going to work or is it not going to work? I guess this part could have definitely been better. There's a lot of like context that you might also have. Anytime you do a project, it's not a standalone project. It's not like a homework assignment in school where you do it and now you're done and you're never going to look at it again. Because in the real world, somebody's going to be maintaining this. Code is never really a finished product, but it's important to have like limitations and future work. And I already know that there are issues with this design. So that's why I wrote a different article in the course. I think it's called limitations. It's free. If you want to read it, I quickly go over. There are technically issues with the fact that we use cloud pub sub, but it has a limitation. The max acknowledge deadline is 600 seconds. And then you can read the details of why that's an issue. What if video processing fails? Well, we never really considered that in the original design doc. Little things like that are important. Honestly, chat GPT is probably going to make writing design docs like this a lot easier. That's like as far as I learned how to write design docs, I think like written communication is really, really helpful to get your like thoughts organized and also for yourself. If I went back and wanted to know about like, how did I do this project? I have a very, very short doc here that I can just quickly read. It would take me like 10 minutes probably to read this and this, and I'd have 90% of the context on the problem. I don't have to like look at all the code. I don't have to go through all these videos. It's like a six hour course or something like that. I don't have to do that. I have like two documents I can quickly read and I'm up to speed. That's what communication is about. Because if you're senior 
engineer is reviewing your thing, they don't have time to look at every little thing. You might not believe this, but sometimes when somebody is reviewing your code or a design doc and they don't understand something, they might just rubber stamp it. They might just say, you know what? I don't feel like doing this. This is written so poorly or I don't understand this. They wrote it in a really bad way. I'm just going to say whatever. I'm just going to approve it because I don't feel like doing it. That does happen. Still, you're going to be held responsible for that. That's why it's important to communicate in a way that people actually understand. If somebody doesn't understand your idea in the real world, they're not always going to tell you. Like if I make a leak code video, the video sucks. People don't always leave a comment telling you what about the video sucked. That's just the real world. Most people won't tell you that. When you're doing something wrong, people won't tell you. So you have to be proactive and find that stuff yourself. You have to be self-critical. You have to always be like looking to improve.